Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Mini Masterpiece Theater Watercolor Workshop. I'm Shauna Robeson with Creating Space Coastal, and in this video, we are going to be working on dragonflies. It's summertime, or well, it's spring still, but that's when they come out. So um, if you'd like to see how we did this, please stay tuned, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and share if you find this content helpful. Let's get started. We're going to do a dragonfly. I, you can, there's many ways to approach this, but the thing about the dragonfly is that those wings, those gossamer wings are kind of transparent. So trying to do a background means that you have to really work to create contrast with it. So I'm going to not, I'm going to be doing some background around the, the border because I tried doing the color on color and with this paper it wasn't really working. So um, so I'm going to do it that way. So I'm going to leave the space for my, for my guy in the middle. The other thing you can do if you want is you could mask it out. So I always try to encourage you guys to, to go rogue and, you know, do it the way you want to do it. But I try to give you guys some tips. Um, but I'm going to just bring some colors around the border and then leave my space open. And then I'll add some splashes on top, I think. So that's how I'm going to approach this. So we'll see how that goes. So as I said, I like wet on wet. I'm just gonna, I just want my edges to be kind of loose and atmospheric. I'm gonna put some, I think I'm gonna do yellows and teals and maybe bring in some purple, but I'm gonna just drop in some color, let it move if it will. <laughs> However, it, it will, um, you just, you know, now I got a little bit of pigment on, on my brush. I'm just going to lay that in and then I'm going to bring in another color. My, I think I'm just going to bring, I think I want to bring in my phthalo, my phthalo blue. That's a really pretty. Lay that in there too. It just doesn't move the way I like. I like it. It doesn't mix and mingle as, as much as when I do the really small, um, when I do the really small paintings, that's fine because I'm not, I don't have that far to go. But when I do try and do, do on a bigger canvas, it, is a little more frustrating, but I'll get over it. I'm gonna see how that adds in. Just around the edges, maybe bring in some darker. I'm using my indigo. And the paper really does bow up too. That's another thing I notice with, with it is it, you know, as it gets wet. Okay, so we've got a little, little, um, just some atmospheric colors. Maybe I'll add even a little bit of some purple. I don't want to add the purple on the yellow because that's going to make a more of a brown. So I'm trying to get it where the blues are. And that's one thing about the color wheel is whenever you use colors that are close together on the wheel, they're going to always work together. But if you go across the wheel, then you get more of the grays, more of the subdued, if you, especially if you go directly across because that's the complementary color you're always going to get a, a gray because they cancel each other out. They neutral each other out. So I can use the purple because purple purple is across from yellow. I can use the purple, but I, if I get too close to the yellow, then I'm going to start getting maybe a little bit of muddiness. Okay. All right. I'm digging that. Now I want to get a little bit of a smaller brush. Now the basic shape of a dragonfly, let that work on drying while I, I mean, we kind of know, 
But so the shape of a dragonfly is essentially there's the, there's the thorax area, and this is this is essentially where the wings attach to this area, and then there's the big eyeballs. Oh, let me zoom in. You guys can see what I'm doing. There's the big eyeballs, and then there's kind of an area. You know, you can put like a mouth or whatever. The rest of the head. And then there's, they have sh little short antenna. And then off the front of this, usually the only thing you can see, um, probably from looking down at the top, is the, two, the front legs, which just come out like that. And then, you're, and then, the, and then the wings, if you, if you think about them as like an X uh, coming out from the thorax, and then the tail part is about uh, five times the length of that. And, it's, and sometimes they're segmented. It, sometimes they're more obviously segmented. So about five segments or just the length of that. You don't have to segment if you don't want to, but that's the general shape. And then there's even different shapes of the, of the wings. Some are really straight in the top and then they come down kind of like a like a knife blade, and then some of them are just really round. But you know what? This is loose, so do you know? Do whatever. So roughly like that. That's kind of where we're going. So I want to generally know where it is, but I want to be real careful because I don't want my I don't want my pencil to show up. But I think I'm gonna pencil pencil a little bit in so I make sure I get the anatomy how I want it. So I'm gonna just start off with my with my wings making just a little X. Okay, my little thorax. My eyeballs. And I'm sticking my hand in my wet paint, so. This is one of my biggest weaknesses is my impatience. <laughs> okay, and then I'm just gonna just roughly put my segments in. I'm not gonna draw them full. I just wanna know kind of how far I wanna go down. So just so I'm getting generally the right anatomy. Otherwise, keep it loose, just make an X and a line through it. It's really that simple. You don't have to get you don't have to get complicated. And um, I'm going to start with the, I'm going to start with the body. And with watercolor, always, it's about layering and patience. So the first layer is your lightest layer. Don't try to necessarily start with the darkest color. You want to always add layers to give it depth, regardless of how dark you want it in the end. The lighter that you start, the more you can just build on layers and you're going to get more depth and dimension if you do it that way. I don't have a lot of working room, so I'm going to use, I'm using um, my smallest natural brush, which is a six. I, I would even probably go smaller if I had just because I'm really, you know, I don't have a big area. But I'm just going to try to not put too much water, not uh, too much pigment, and just see if I can put a nice light layer. And I want the body, I think I'm gonna do the body kind of purple and then I'm gonna do more of the teals and yellows along the wings. And this is when, you know, a lot of people like to mix in their palette. And then what I mean by that is they mix their color here, but it's hard to control the amount of water because you're, you know, you're getting full concentration. So I do like to use the palette to just test how much water to color pigment ratio. I can kind of get an idea. And sometimes I'll even have a little paper next to me and just test it there to see, oh, is that the right amount of color? Because it's a lot harder to take color away than it is to add it, so. And then the tail kind of tapers at the end. So I'm going to try to, get to taper a little bit. So 
Um, I'm lifting a little bit just because it was pooling and I don't want too much to go. So, all right. Now I'm gonna take my lightest color, which is my yellow, and I'm gonna use my, I think this is azo, azo yellow, just real light. And I just want a real light wash of that for my wings. So I'm just gonna, and I don't mind if where that purple is in the middle, I don't mind if that mixes and mingles because that can be gray right there at the body. I'm okay with that. I don't wanna put too much into it, but. So I'm just drawing in the shape of my wing. Generally it's a little loose. with my lightest color. A little bit. I'm, I want it real loosey goosey. Okay. And now I can drop in while this is still wet. I'm basically, I'm doing a wet on wet just into another pigment. I can take my next color, which is, I'm going to use this. Um, I think this is the halo, the halo blue. My, um, my palette is upside down, <laughs> how I put it in. So the writing is upside down when I have it. So I'm just gonna start in the middle because I want the color to be the deepest right at the base of the color and see how that's feeding that in. And then I'm gonna go just along the top edge, just the very tip because it's gonna suck it, it's gonna wick it down but I want the most concentration to be along the top edge of that wing. And this is one of those colors that does actually move. I mean, that's moving pretty good. And then I'm gonna do the same, the top of this wing. And you can see as it starts to dry, it wicks less. And now I'm going to go back to the body and, and especially right there in the thorax where it's touching the wings and I want to put a little bit of purple in there and see if I can get that to, to go out to the wings a little bit. And maybe I want to just drop in a little bit of that. If I'm patient, it, I can get it to work a little bit. Now I'm not dropping it into the yellow, but if it goes in the yellow a little bit, that's okay. It's gonna, it's gonna subdue that. It's gonna turn a little bit brown, but that's okay. It gives a very variation of color. Now I'm gonna let that cook and work a little bit more on the body. And I'm running just on it's a little too much. I'm just gonna run it along the side of the, each of these little segments because I want those to be the darkest. And I went from too much to too little. And then just drop in some dots in to give a little bit of texture, make it interesting. Now I'm gonna see if I can get 
I don't want it too harsh a line. I'm going to just see if I can wet this a little bit. And put a little bit of that blue on that side. Just along the edge, just to imply the bottom edge of the wing. But I don't want it to move too much, so I'm just putting a tiny, tiny bit. Sometimes we try tiny and it just wicks it right in. So <laughs> with watercolor, you have to be willing to accept, expect the unexpected and let it play. And sometimes what I'll do is if I've got like some pulling or whatever and it's not moving and I want it to move, I'll just pick up the page and see if I can get it to go a certain direction. I, mean, I want it to bleed that way. That's a great way to get some. And then the other thing I do is I'll use my straw and try to blow. And if it's wet enough, this right now I don't think is, but, oh, there we go. So sometimes you can coax it to go where you want it to go by angling the paper or a little blowing, or sometimes just putting a little bit of wetness there just to pull it over that direction. All right, I want a little bit of um, some, I think that that blue, the phthalo blue, I think I want a little bit of that in the body too. So I'm just gonna plop a little bit in here and there, not too much, just, um, just introduce the color. I think it goes nicely with the, with the purple. Maybe soften some of that. All right. Now for the eyes, I think I want, let me see if I can get this um, phthalo green. Let me try these phthalo green eyes on it. I'm just going to put a little tiny bit of Try to really get a little, I want it constant, I, I want it somewhat concentrated, but I just, I don't want it too wet because it's a very small area. And what happens, especially uh, if you, especially when you have an, a natural brush that holds a lot of pigment and, and it can hold a lot of water, you touch it on an absorbent surface and it wicks it out. So you can add too much, too much if, you, if you're not careful. So to avoid that, I'm just gonna blot it up. I want it, I don't want it too wet because I really want control. And the more water, the less control you get. So I'm just gonna try to, oopsie, and I didn't get enough pigment. I want more pigment than yeah. that. I want too much, but there we go. I want to leave a little white spot kind of for the shine. I could always add it back later. Um, okay. It's easier. It's easier to add <laughs> back the white than it is to maintain it sometimes in such a small space. Okay. And then I think for the head part, I'm just going to go ahead with some more of the purple. And again, it's just a small area. Now the green is, is wet. So if I actually, I'm not going to go in now because that green is wet. So I just talked myself out of that. I gotta be careful. Um, I'm gonna let that green dry first before I go in there. And then I'm just gonna think about what else I wanna do. I think um, I wanna, I don't wanna do too much because these wings are real delicate and you can overdo it. I feel like I this one maybe just needs a little, little bit more color added just to balance it out, just compared to the other ones. So, but oftentimes we just go too far. <laughs> it's, it, it's very easy to wanna just keep going. It's like, oh, am I done? I don't wanna be done. Let me just keep playing. 
So just, you know, pace yourselves. And there we go. I'm just bringing up some of that, like, too big of a white space that I didn't like. Now maybe I want to bring a shape of the wing there a little bit. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and dry because I want to get to the, I want to do the head and then I'm going to start adding some of seeing if I can do uh, some of the pearl essence on there. So let me pause my sound so you guys don't have to listen to the hair dryer. I do recommend if you have time to just let things dry naturally. I think it's just allows the pigment to move, but a hair dryer is always okay, you know, always a good tool to quicken the process. Um, here's my sound. Where's my, okay. Here. All right, and when you try to work too quickly and you don't let it dry, that's, I get into a trouble a lot from that because I just get too impatient and I think it's dry, but it's not. And so be patient, it's, it's a good, it's a good, uh, watercolor is a good tool to learn patience. So, and usually you'll feel, if you feel the paper and it feels cool, that's usually it's still wet or if it's more buckled, the more buckled it is. Those are good indicators, it's still, Still wet, so just you know, just trying to be patient. All right, let's see if I can get this little purple mouth or whatever this part is. And then one thing I would probably do, I, I'm gonna try to just do everything with watercolor because this is watercolor, but I think it's perfectly fine to use either pencils, watercolor, color pencils, watercolor pencils, or fine liners to do some of the details because sometimes it's just really hard to get the get the, those deepest blacks and really fine lines of them. It, it takes a little bit of extra work. So I'm gonna try to stick to paint because that's what we're doing. But, um, but uh, you know, I might, even if you're trying to draw in those veins, for sure, it's much easier to control uh, a marker. You know, it would take a lot to really get the, the fine detail that you can get with the marker. So, uh, I, you know, it's perfectly fine to do that. It just turns it into a linen wash, you know, or a mixed media, and that's okay. All right, I'm going to go in with my Payne's Gray, see if I can draw in some darker details. And now I'm going to be holding my, my brush more like a pencil and, and like I'm drawing, but I have to be very careful to go very light not to press too much because I just want to use that very tip, like almost like one single, one single hair. <laughs> Let's see if I can make it so you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm trying to do it at an angle that you guys can see. 
Oopsie, I pushed too, too, too hard on that side. So now I'm gonna make it a little, it's almost like more like a V leg <laughs> full of pollen. So it's a little tricky. And then I'm going to maybe put in a little bit of uh, some lines in on the wings, but I don't want them like a solid line. I just want to touch it and just um, just give a hint of structure. So I'm going to try that. We'll see how it goes. Just giving a hint that there is some kind of uh, pattern there. The, the the little vein structure in the wing. Now, because I'm not good at turning my turning my hand and getting the same angle, I have to turn my my work. So I don't have the space to do that. So just easier for me to do it this way. So I'm a proponent of rotating. a little more paint spray. Again, I'm very little water. I'm just trying to do it as concentrated as possible with very little water so that I'm not, so I have that control. The more water, the less control. Okay, so I'm just telling the story. That's what it's all about. How much of the story do you need to tell? You don't always have to tell as much as you think. You're just saying, oh, there's some kind of a web system there, but um, if there's some texture in there. You can see that, but we don't have to put every single, every single line. When you do too much, you either have to go like full reality or keep it loose. If you go too much, sometimes, unless you're really getting that, that realism, like you're, you're making everything, it, it can be over, it can be, it can actually um, make it look less real sometimes. So, all right, I'm liking how that's coming along. And I think I'm gonna, let that be the base, and then I'm going to do some of my try my my, sh my shimmer, my bling. See see how that goes. So I think that'll be fun, especially I want to do it on the body, maybe some maybe a little bit in the wings. Okay, so let's see what happens if I add a little bit of this. This is like I said, Dollar Dollar Tree. It's LA Colors shimmering. I'm going to try that because. Uh, it's cheap. Uh, let's see if I can figure out how to get it out. This, I don't know how much it's gonna take. I've never done this before. So we're gonna learn together what this is gonna be like. And then I'm gonna try to mix it with a bit of purple. Mm. 
don't know if you can see that, but if you get it to, it's not gonna, I think that might work. You gotta mix it real good because, you know, the, you wanna get rid of all the little grains, but. So a little eyeshadow if you don't have, <laughs> I mean, it's basically mica powder. It's just what they add to make, you know, metallic paint. So it might be mixed with other, you know, maybe it's not as artist grade, but oh, I think that could work. It's pretty shimmery. It's it's show, it's showing up dark, so I don't know if it's gonna stand out, but look at what let me see if I can get more. probably going to be real subtle and plus I'm looking at it from the side it may not pop out as much I can't really tell <laughs> I can't really tell in this lighting to be honest let's see if I can get this up I'm going to try mixing the purple eyeshadow with a little bit of the Prussian blue. I don't know how that's going to go. Maybe if I add a little bit of some gouache white just to make it a little more opaque, I wonder if that will um, make it you know, pop a little bit more. Let's just, let's just get It's all about. Okay, Can't really see it obvious right now, but like I said, maybe once I let it dry and look at it from an angle, it'll show up. So. So far, I'm like, meh. <laughs> now, let me try a little bit with the actual real metallics. Maybe, maybe that will be all the difference in the world. I like this little green. I like all these colors. They're really fun colors, I have to say. Yeah, they stand up more, for sure. Okay, so that's the lesson there. Um, I think, I think using you know real metallic paint works better. <laughs> oh, we try. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and dry this. Shauna, can you bring your picture really close? I wanted to see if you put lines. Did you really put lines in it or just, okay. I just okay, got it. it around. Oh, okay. Thank you. So you can kind of see it, but it's one of those things where the color's not, yeah, it's, it's subtle, but you can see it when you kind of tilt it better, the iridescence. I don't know if it's going to pick up on this camera very well. Maybe after I dry, sometimes when it's dry, it, it, it pops a little bit more. So let me mute. Okay, let's see if I can get, so can you see the shimmer now of that green that I put on there? It's really, you know, it really does stand out. Compared to the other, you really have to be in the right angle. So, 
um, it's not, it's not like really, it's very subtle. So, and maybe that's just the colors choices that I use. You know, this is getting a little bit overworked, so I'm not able to get it to pop really well, but there we go. Okay, so now I want to leave him alone, leave her alone, <laughs> because I'm over, starting to get to the point of overworking. And, but I want to add some more interest to this whole composition. So I'm going to start with my toothbrush. Just here somewhere. And I'm just going to do, you know, put some spritzing in with some of the colors on some of my color schemes. Come on. I want it to be pretty concentrated color, but not too much, no, not too much water. There we go. I'm going to take a little bit of some white wash. And then some indigo. Just getting some contrast. And then I'm going to just um, I, I just instead of letting it just be speckles, I'm just going to take a little bit of a, a, a brush and just do a little, you know, just a wet brush, not too wet, but and I'm just going to go in there and soften some of it just to give it, you know, not so just speckles, but just to kind of loosen some of those, mix it up. There we go. What do you want to do? Went a lot faster. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and dry this. All right, now I want to I want to add a little bit more bigger splatter. So I'm going to take my rigger brush 
or just any round brush. And I'm just gonna take some of the Haynes Gray, that's my darkest. And I'm just gonna try to put some spots in there. Maybe this one's too small. <laughs> I'm gonna use my round brush. This one works pretty well. And then I think what I want to do is I want to try to put, see if I can find maybe a really light metallic and just go in and drop in some, maybe this really bright line here and see if that'll just stand out in some of the darker colors. And then maybe this purple here. I'm going to try to see if I can add a couple of those just in some highlights. See what happens. And maybe this fun purple. Let's see what that. Oh, I don't know. I think I'm just overworking it. <laughs> okay. I think I need to walk away, walk away. Wait, sometimes it's knowing when to walk with me. All right, so there is a fun little butterfly. Or, not butterfly. <laughs> Let me pull my tape. Oops. This will not tear. This tape isn't so great. So we still have some time. So maybe I'll do another one of those little ones like I my loose right, my real loose one. Um, using the straw. Since we have some extra time. Probably not time to do another big one, but I can do another little, little mini. And I can see the iridescence, but I don't, or, you know, the metallics. I don't know if you can see those too well, but they're, they're subtle, which is good. I don't want it to be too overwhelming, but okay. So let me just get another little, let me get a little canvas. So I'm just going to put in my body. How simple it is. This would be really loose.
I mean, you don't have a lot of space to work with here. <laughs> Now I'm using purple with the yellow because it's gonna tone it out, but it's gonna give it some color, but it's gonna tone down the, you know, tone it down where it mixes together, but it's gonna also have See how it kind of turns that brown a little bit? It's not moving. I'm, I'm trying not to put too much water in, but if I don't do put enough water in, then it doesn't move. If I put too much, it. touching the sides to get it to move. I want it to move. I want these to be really like loose, loose wings. So I'm just touching along the sides to get it to move. I want it just real loosey goosey.
right, so there's more of a really loosey, atmospheric y kind of dragonfly. I like the, um, the plum colors that I got on that. Okay. Now, if I wanted to, if I, again, I'm okay with using like a gel pen or something, you know, non-watercolor, I could go in, let's see where it is. I could go in and try to do some, you know, put in some little detail highlights. I like gel pens for doing highlights. I like doing the fine liners, low for low lights and a little white gel. I think that's a kind of figure one. Play around with it. But you can have a lot of fun with adding in some highlights. You can use, if you are, you know, have really good dexterity with your, you know, and you have a really fine um, brush, you can certainly use your paints. You could use a wash, um, but I just feel like it's easier you know, to do with white. Alrighty, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pause the video. Let me just show these two one more time. And I'm gonna back this up a little bit. There we go. And then I'll do this style too. That's similar to that one. Thank you so much for joining us. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share if you find this content helpful. And as always, happy creating.